mum 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 moon gang. Oh golly, I should take off my glasses. Folks, 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 we're doing a little bit about a fun stream today. A little bit different. I know normally you're just hankering for my market update video, but here we are to discuss a little bit, I guess, of like interspeller stuff, rocket science stuff. Um, so apparently during the stream this morning, we all found out that NASA is going to attempt to murk an asteroid in a little bit over an hour. So I figured, hey, we should stream it because that seems really, really fun. So yeah, we could talk about the market. I, I'm prepped. I mean, we could actually do a whole market wrap up video if you guys want. Um, but I do also have the NASA stream ready to go. Let me switch this over to here. Is anything happening yet? Well, I guess I turned off the volume. Uh, there is no volume. Apparently we're just waiting. We're waiting. We're waiting. Uh, allegedly they start speaking and everything like now. Um, I don't know what's going on, but we're ready. So here's the dealio. I want to give you the rundown of why we're even talking about it. NASA is about to crash into an asteroid. All right. An asteroid minding its own business, not too far from Earth, is about to get knocked about by a visitor from our planet. You heard that right. There's an asteroid minding its own business. And the folks over at NASA are saying, hey, I wonder what it would be like to completely ruin that asteroid's day. On Monday, NASA's Double Asteroid Redirection Test spacecraft, also known as a DART or DART, is set to collide with Dimorphos. Dimorphos, a small asteroid that is the moon of a larger space rock, also known as Diddy Moss. Did did your mom? Did did moss? Did did moms? Did moms? I think it's pronounced did moms. I don't know. Sounds pretty Greek if you ask me. And once again, just to like illustrate how messed up NASA is with this and how aggressive they're being, um, it poses no immediate threat to our world. It's just more of to prove a point. Uh, but here's what they're doing. DART, which is roughly, it's a rocket roughly the size of a refrigerator. They're going to send this into Dimorphos at 14,000 miles per hour in, as you can see, it just over an hour. So that's what we're here to do. And apparently at like 50 minutes out, the reason I'm starting this early is apparently like 50 minutes out, which should, if you do the math correctly, should be in about 10 to 20 minutes. That's the craziest part of today because they're going to be switching the trajectory, the target of the big old planet to that little guy. And I guess that's what these all, these nerdy rocket scientists, like, you know, the full on Jimmy Neutrons are actually going to be doing and talking about. So it's going to be a wild one. Uh, it's going to be actually a very, very crazy one. Uh, I want this to get going. But in the meantime, I mean, I have the volume up, so we're not going to miss anything. Um, show of hands, we could do a full on market breakdown if you guys want to know the deal you want today, because if you saw today, not so good. Uh, thus far, and I don't want to cause any alarm, year to date, the SPY is down 23.5%. 23.5% the market has fallen, fallen, fallen. And for those of you keeping score, yes, the Bears are winning. Not the football team, but the market players are definitely winning. And the Bulls thus far have, like, they just blew their load a little too early. From mid-July to mid-August, the Bulls had their run and the Bears came in and smashed it back into their face with the help of our Federal Reserve and their monetary policy and kind of the crazy quantitative tightening that we are seeing. But this is brutal. Every major time frame is red. And I don't know if there's any children watching. This might be like when you want to cover their eyes or something, but it's it's even more horrific if you look at the Nasdaq. I mean, we're down 31% on the year. You guys want to see something actually like scary? Look at this. Look at this one. You didn't know, I know it's not October yet, but here's a little bit of just how brutally red everything is. I'm actually surprised energy got this bad today. Apple trying to be a little green. Uh, Costco, Costco actually had a pretty solid day. And yes, it's because of other things, but I like to think it's because the CEO was on CNBC today and he said, no amount of inflation will ever get us to raise the cost of our combo hot dog deal. So I'd like to think that the market rewarded them for being good human beings. And they're like, you know what? We're going to run it up by 3% today. So Costco and their combo hot dog deal, which I know all of us love very dearly, 
is what's apparently keeping the S&P 500 alive. So that's some pretty awesome stuff. But anyway, yes, if you cover the eyes of your children, you, oh, let me switch it back. Let's actually see. Not, not as bad. So brutally bad. Like, I don't know if this is, huh, we're going to move this from a PG to a PG 13 show uh, with looking at the Russell 2000. But overall, we're flirting with those lows. And just because I don't have an update video for you filmed, just so you know, I'm watching this level between 362, 364. That's major support. Yes, please pay attention that the RSI is oversold. Please pay attention that we have a very close upside gap filled to 373. Those are all valid levels to pay attention to. Probably more importantly though, I want you to really take a look at do right here. Look how many Fed members are speaking this week. So today we had Bostic, Logan, Mester, Collins. Tomorrow we have Powell, Evans times two. That's like when he goes super sane, like he's going full on holographic collectible level. Evans speaking twice, then Bullard and Daly. I mean, I believe overall, I keep referencing this and I need to look it up. I think about 22 Fed discussions are going to be happening this week, which is nuts. And you have to ask yourself, okay, like, why are they going nuts? And it's because of just the unprecedented situation we're in. And I get it. I get it. I get it. If you're watching CNBC, if you're watching our boy Kramer, he's telling you it's all fine and it's going to be good. And he borderline swore it, which if you believe at all with the inverse Kramer, you know that it's going to not go that way. Then basically whatever he says is wrong. Uh, coming out of the ECB, the European Central Bank 2023 will certainly be a difficult year. That's exactly, exactly what you don't want to hear. That's actually a pretty brutal thing to hear from the European Central Bank telling us actively that the year is going to be very, very bad. Um, also, if you were watching this, uh, this is going to be a little bit confusing to people who didn't catch the morning show today. But yes, big news if you're in the know. Farmer fought and strangled a ferocious wolf with his bare hands. So to a lot of you who were kind of being like naysayers and saying that, no way, Matt, could you fight a malnourished wolf with your bare hands? And you guys thought I was crazy. Well, this Russian farmer, it wasn't even malnourished. He just like did it himself. He was protecting, I believe, his dogs and his horse. So that's just a little bit of a, a side tangent that I think it's important we all actually know about. But right now, I mean, let me bring up market right here da, 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 da. so a lot of fed members speaking today uh look at this so 3 30 a.m charles evans being interviewed then 6 15 evans getting an early start to his day done by 6 15 done by the time that most of us are waking up and then jerome powell rocking at 7 30 then we get durable goods core capital goods some important stuff there 9 a.m 9 55 we have another fed member Consumer Confidence Index. This one should be an interesting one, basically, because we've been seeing it plummet lately, uh, especially on the global scale. So I want to check that out. That's 10 a.m., so a half hour into market trading. New home sales. We know that the world of real estate, especially in the U.S., has been taking a breather. We're going to see if that trend continues. And then another Fed discussion, and then another Fed discussion. So daily staying up real late, while on the other hand, we have Evans getting up real real early i do want to quickly show you something just because we are not only in the final week of the month but we're also in the final week of the quarter so it's good to kind of check in on some of these seasonality trends if you come to equity clock you could check this out basically this is what the futures market has done on various future markets for the past two decades if you look at september there is a bullish push and then but as you get into the end it's a pretty horrific bearish sell-off statistically from month start to month end, September is actually one of the worst months of the year. I believe it's actually the worst month of the year in terms of the average percentage decline. And it looks like this is going to hold. I mean, right now, let me get to the start of August or excuse me, the end of August, the start of September on the month. We are currently down 7.78%, 7 7.8, something like that. Um, for one month, I mean, and that even included at one point, we had a nice pop of 5.5. So even with a pop of 5.5, we're still, the overall market lost almost 8%, which if you have a calculator at your side, that's many billions and billions, hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars lost into the ecosystem uh, lost into the ether, I should better say. And it's not just crypto or excuse me, it's not just equity. Crypto has been pretty hammered too. Right now, Bitcoin sitting above 19,000. 
the fact that we actually are holding above 18 right now blows my mind. I mean, just with how bad the Nasdaq has been. You have ETH that's trading at uh, 1,320. Remember, they just went through with their merge event. So a lot of people were pretty happy with that, but it kind of turned into one of those buy the rumor, sell the news types of events. And we have sold off from 1750 all the way to 1320. Bitcoin ETH, do I think they come back? Yeah. Do I think they're coming back tomorrow? No. I think things are going to, there's a good chance, especially just because of what the Fed's doing. If you were continually engaging with the market in a way where it was just following the tr Fed trend, as in when they were doing unheard of quantitative easing from March until January, great, be a bull. That's why the market ripped and ripped and ripped. And then in January, when they're like, hey, in our minutes, uh, turns out we're talking about quantitative tightening. And then when they actually switch to it, well, that's why we've kind of sold off. Now, is that going to work for every individual equity that goes rip city? No. But if you're paying attention to the overall market, what's going on with bonds, what's going on with yields, I mean, the yield situation right now, it's enough to make a grown man cry. Um, if you're on trading view, you could get the two year yield by typing in us zero two Y and then to get the 10 it's us 10 Y, um, just a little bit of a pro tip, but look at this, look at what we did today. This is just nuts. So the 10 year yield, excuse me, the 10 year is still below the two, the two's at 4.345 while the 10's at three, nine, two, eight. That's not supposed to happen. Well, first of all, these yields are extraordinarily high. And this morning we were covering the story how this is the worst bond sell-off since 1949, which a lot of you might argue is a great year because I know we were all actively paying attention then. But we're breaking these multi-decade records that we shouldn't be breaking. If you're looking at the drop-off in sterling, the pound, if you're looking at the relative drop-off in the yen, if you're looking at the parity that we have between the euro and the USD, like all of these records are not good. The only record that we're really holding on to is I believe we're still roughly at a four to five decade low in unemployment, which that's good, but that's a little bit of a mathematical sleight of hand because what they don't tell you is when we're doing that, we're also at a very low labor force. So unemployment, low unemployment's great, but you want that to happen when you have people actively working. And then this, why I'm going on to, it's not really a political stance or a central bank stance or anything like that. Let's just think about it more of humanity of, we're all figuring out what's going on, that R word, recession. I don't even know if I could say, it. I'd be surprised if YouTube didn't mark me for saying the R word. But right now with so many people, like less, less work. I mean, this is just anecdotal. You know me, on Sundays, I gotta go over to my local China Castle place and they have General Salas chicken. And I go on and there's a big sign that says, no more dining. We're only doing takeout because of a staff shortage. And I'm sure many of you are going to have like potentially your own story of just seeing all these help wanted signs, these staff shortage signs. Um, it's very much a real issue. And obviously we're experiencing it in the U.S. I'm sure it's a similar global phenomena. But right now, this is all tied together. This is all very, very much tied together. Um, so I kind of wanted to do a breakdown of, yes, the yields are still inverted. That's not good. Does a yield inversion mean we're going to a recession? No, but yields have inverted before every single recession we've had. Now, sometimes it's inverted and it's given a false signal where recessions never come, but it's still not good. And then also there's a similar stat, I believe with oil getting above 120, 130 a barrel that we've never not gotten into a recession after that. And within the past six months, we've actually seen both of those. We've seen oil go sky high, and we've also seen the two and the 10 invert. Um, for those of you who are maybe curious about yields and bonds and like why this is bad in general, the highest level way I could explain it is when the yields are paying more in the short term, that means there's a, on a relative basis, a larger exodus from those bonds. Now, why would people be leaving those short term bonds as in the two year? It's because they're worried about what's going on in the short term. So they're going to be going over to a longer dated bond. And as you bond, buy a bond and the bond price goes up, the yield's going to come down. Now, obviously, this can get into a multi-hour like macroeconomic discussion. Like there's much, much more to it. But just on the highest level, that's probably a good way for at least you to get your like mind really balanced around what the hell is or isn't happening when we're talking about bonds and yields and all these cor currencies things. I mean, 
I streamed the market for a year and a half before we even really had to start talking about the dollar index. I mean, it went on for so, so long before we started talking about Dixie here. And this girl has been ripping. Um, and really, it's just because the greenback, the USD, has been having so much relative strength compared really to the euro, followed by the yen, followed by the pound. That's the main thing that the dollar is being compared about against in this particular index. But we're at 114. And for those of you who are like, well, okay, well, how much is 114? Is that big? Is it small? What's going on? Just look at how much it's ripping. This is the dollar index. We kind of bottomed at the start of the year exactly when they basically, and when I say they, I'm referring to the Fed, excuse me, when the Fed decided that they're switching from quantitative easing to quantitative tightening, that's pretty much where we bottom. Then we had a double bottom at 89. And ever since then, at the end of May until now, the dollar index is up 27% eventually eventually there's going to be a massive dollar index puke the dixie is going to vomit horribly it's going to remind you of your college days when you were a freshman you're like i could totally handle my beer and you couldn't handle your beer and you ended up vomiting for a day and a half and you may or may not have ended up crying in a shower but that's besides the point we're not bringing that up it's water under the bridge we're talking about what's going on in the market team we're talking about exactly what's happening here and the dollar's ripping as the market right here is selling and this is just what it is this is by no means meant to be doomsday and cause any form of calamity because you watching this unless you're here exclusively for the rocket taking off you know how to make them like you can play this either way like you could be bullish you could be bearish you could be neutral you could sell premium there's so many ways to make money in the market the name of the game is can you identify the current trend or lack of trend so right now just be realistic of what's going on. Like it, it, this isn't um, that common way where the market's pitch of you just buy stock and you wait and wait and wait. That's a viable strategy and that strategy will still work. But if you're more of an active trader, if you're more of a swing trader, no one says you have to be permanently bullish right now. Go with the prevailing trend and that's where you're going to make your money. So I, I by no means want to be this doomsday call out of crater, crater, crater. It's more of saying, let's be realistic about the current trend and see if we can make some proper risk to reward bets off of that. So with all that being said of where we're at and officially in a bear market, what's going on with NASA right now? Why are they not talking? Why are they not talking to us? Hello, NASA? What's weird is whenever you watch a NASA stream, they have a high, high amount of, oh, here we go. Here we go, dart. All right, we're about 50 minutes out. So this 55 in the top left at 50, that's when they're doing the reposition. Man, time that perfectly. Live dart cam. would tell you a joke, but he would also give you an answer. So you didn't feel awkward asking questions. You just feel good coming out with there, more you knowledge, be good. but also you had fun in the process. I've known Ray probably since I started working here almost 25 years ago, and he was always like a good mentor and a sounding board for anything we were doing. I think everybody learns something from Ray, his leadership skills, how to treat people, <laughs> how to work as a team. Ray was a pretty amazing person. Even though he was fighting this terrible disease, he made it a point to be involved in all the rehearsals and all the activities going on on DART. He led the mission operations team to the last few days of his life. He was really hoping to, to make it to the end of this mission. He meant so much to this team and to getting us to this point. It represents so many years of hard work of him and also the team, but him leading that team. And so the DART spacecraft is a tribute to Ray. 
we are Long on Ray. Ray, Ray sounds like the fucking and kind man. Of goes out to Ray and to his family. We will, we will really miss him, and we already miss him. Raymond Joseph Hart. Long on Ray. Ray seems like a great guy. Ray has touched so many lives. Even in the short time that I knew him, he was so generous with his knowledge, and he made you feel like you belonged. Ray, you will be greatly missed. This one's for you, Tahira. Thank you, Samson, for that Whoa, beautiful dedication. It's the Hulk lady. Now, if you're just Why joining so us, green? we're under an hour away from the DART spacecraft's head-on collision. You won't with like me when I'm space. angry. DART's mission is a test of a planetary You're going to piss her off, and she's going to destroy the asteroid. Humanity. Rest assured, the test poses no threat to Earth. The spacecraft is almost 7 million miles away from they us say right it's now. No threat and you're to Earth. watching a live stream of its approach to Dimorphos. It takes about 45 seconds for the images you're seeing in the DART cam to make their way back to Earth. Damn. Any moment now, we should learn if DART is ready to commit to impact. While oh, we wait, Dart's I'm ready. here with Andy Rifkin, DART science investigation lead, and Mallory D. Coster, DART impact modeler. Why is she Andy, so green? Mallory. While we wait to learn if DART is ready to commit to Dimorphos, I can't help but wonder why this asteroid? That's a great question. Yeah, why are we going to fuck up this the asteroid? The double asteroid redirection test was designed, it was uh, to, to measure the period change in a binary asteroid system. So we needed a binary asteroid, so that eliminates some number of objects. Mm -hmm. We needed something uh, with a moon that was small enough that we could move it with uh, a uh, strike from a from a spacecraft, mm -hmm. um, but not so small that we wrecked the uh, the moon. So when you kind of tick off all the possibilities, Didymos really ended up as the best choice. Didymos. Really the only choice that I thought it was did your mom. A mission in this time period. They need to think of better names. See, I want to go back to that. You mentioned having a moon that we could push but not destroy. Could you now in pop culture a lot we you see that like you know I'm oftentimes angry. the idea is to just totally try to demolish the asteroid. Why have we chosen to not test that technique this time? Yeah, the conventional wisdom uh, for planetary defense is that you don't want to um, disrupt an object and blow it into a zillion pieces, but you want to keep it intact and just move it all as one piece. Because if you move it all in one piece, then you can keep track of it a lot easier. If you blow it into a million pieces, then some of them might still Earth, <laughs> and you don't want to miss a thing. Yeah, we might have more issues then. So we know that we have the perfect test subject. Mallory, now can you help us understand how, if mission success, um, DART's mission tonight can help improve models for mitigating hazardous asteroids in the future. That's exactly right. So we stand to learn a lot from this DART impact. DART is both a technology demonstration as well as a really big science experiment. So from a technology standpoint, we're going to see if we have what it takes to autonomously navigate a spacecraft into a relatively small celestial body, something the size of a, of a football stadium um, that's pretty far away from Earth. Um, from a science perspective, we get to perform one of the largest and fastest impact experiments that man has done, something yeah. <laughs> that could never be accomplished in a laboratory here on Earth. Mm -hmm. So we're going to learn how these large sizes, these fast impact velocities, and also these sort of extraterrestrial asteroid materials respond to deflection. Wow, I mean, there's so much about tonight that we don't know, and it seems like you're fun is just getting started, right, until after impact. So Mallory, Andy, thank you so much. And tonight, ground-based telescopes aren't the only one watching the action. A small cube satellite built by the Italian Space Agency was deployed by DART 15 days ago and has been in the area to give us a bird's eye view of impact. Here's more on Lichia Cube. Matthew, I love you doing streams like this. Haven't joined streams just in the second TTG chat. Open mic is giving you a cut. What's going on, Ben? The Shakib mission objectives is to support DART in the documentation of the impact effects, in particular in terms of the ejecta of materials that will be released from the asteroid surface after the impact, and also imaging the non-visible side of the asteroid during its flyby. Lishakube will acquire uh, uh, images using uh, its two different cameras, uh, Leia, a panchromatic camera, and Luke, an RGB camera. Therefore, we can uh, better understand the nature of the asteroid dimorphos impacted by DART. 
By means of our scientific operation center in SSDC ASI, we will distribute and process the images in order to make the, uh, them available to the entire team. We are here in Argotex Mission Control Center in Turin, from where, together with ASI, we monitor the status of Lycia Cube. The batteries are charged, the radio is communicating correctly, and the navigation aptitude is on the right trajectory. Everything is ready for the most important part of the DART mission, the impact with the asteroid. DART is a global oh, effort the whole to prepare lady. humanity for the unthinkable. Before so the spacecraft great. can complete its mission, the autonomous navigation system must first confirm a lock on target. This is a key milestone that we should be hearing about soon. So let's go back to Samson for the latest for mission we're operations. We're definitely, definitely fucking up an alien base right now. Okay, There's no way that we're just doing this for fun. There's bigger... We, just heard so we need to call up Steve news. Carell in the Space we have Force. Reached the point where smart nav is now target locked onto the morph yo target locked uh, that progress bar should move to your right that much further closer to impact very exciting here we go target uh, lock time joining me is someone who worked on the instrument playing a starring role with this major milestone and basically all the way up to impact lisa wu mechanical engineer who helped install the draco camera and built its cover lisa thank you for joining me thank you for having me so we just heard <laughs> Big news, we hit this target lock. It could have come fairly later than this, yeah. but it is very, it is. We are. We're in a good spot with this target exactly. lock. How are you feeling? I am so excited. I'm sure the entire team is ecstatic. This is what we've been working so hard for in these very last moments, and we just heard we got target lock, so could not be feeling any better. Very exciting. I mean, we, we, are, we are humming along. So a quick recap, Smart had this DART's autonomous navigation system. It's been called the brains of the spacecraft. And right now it's essentially maneuvering that spacecraft on its own, as it will be for the last four hours. Mm -hmm. A Draco imager is providing SmartNav with that unflinching view of Demorphos, about an image per second. It is the eyes of the spacecraft. Lisa, what makes this camera perfect for this mission? Yeah, of course. So the Draco instrument is a very, very high resolution, narrow field of view telescope. Um, the image quality, let's go back. Uh, Draco is a descendant of the Lori telescope, which might sound familiar because it took the very first Did he just blow his of nose? Pluto on the New Horizons mission, which also might sound very familiar because that is an APL-led mission. So if you've ever seen the first pictures of Pluto, that is the amazing quality that we have on DART. That's incredible heritage. And yeah, anyone who saw those images of Pluto, those were amazing. And that kind of ups the ante for what we're going to see with these pictures of the morphos, right? Oh, yeah. So we all know about, a lot of us have smartphones with, you know, cameras. We have mm -hmm. cracks, we have smudges. How did your team make sure that this camera made it in pristine condition to get to this point? Of course. So our flight hardware, including this instrument, was made in the clean room, very, very high, clean facility. Um, in order to make sure that the what's a high clean worked, facility, we had to put it through a lot of electrical testing, optical testing, alignment testing. We had to make sure it performs as we intended. And then not only that, you have to take this instrument and put it through all the environments that it will see through space. So we put it through vibration testing, thermal vacuum chamber testing, all to make sure that it performs and it will survive through space. That's amazing. Test, 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 and test again, right? Yes. This is how we get Draco tested. from Harry Potter. Exactly. I think it's the same guy, that yeah. That is great. He's really Thanks into so much, cinematography now. The number now. of astounding technologies that are on board this spacecraft is amazing, but doing Listen, the Listen, buttheads, destroy that like button, get more people in here. Right? Mm -hmm. All right, so here, we have the technology. Clearly, we have the talent. Now we wait for history. Why is there such a bad Back to you. echo? All right. Why is Thank she you. the whole? It feels good to know that we have locked. I mean, on if we had Captain Morphos. Marvel helping now, us, it'd be easy to take care of this asteroid. Questions by using the hashtag Planetary Defender, and I am joined now by two real-life Planetary Defenders. We have Kelly Marvel. Bass oh, and shit. Lucas Never mind. Paganini, both from NASA's Planetary Defense This is Defense Iron Man, Formation and Office. this is Let's Thor. Let's dive into what you want to know. So, Kelly, Lucas, before I get to social media Dude, questions, fix the we audio, actually have NASA. a special question from a familiar face, especially if you're into football. So let's take a moment and hear from him. What's up? I'm Joshua Dobbs, quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. Now, I have a question I for the NASA's start team. 
On the field, I have to use precision passing in order to get the football in the hands of my teammates. And at least I can see where they are. For NASA Star Team, how are you able to aim a spacecraft at an object so far away? You know, that's a really good no question, way was he Kelly, thinking that. I mean, we haven't really done this before. Fucking quarterback. How can we aim? Hmm. How do they do Not this? To say, Come Joshua on, does in a few such seconds bullshit. What we've taken, you know, years <laughs> to do. Um, just as he has to throw it where he knows that the player will be, throw his football where the player will be. Dart needs to end up where uh, Dynamos and Dimorphos will be, and so that that was learned from uh, astronomy, looking at through telescopes, calculating the orbit, no. and then the no. people who belong. No way was there an American NFL quarterback who's he's sitting there in his free time. He's like, damn. How are they going to hit it? What in the world are they possibly going to do? <laughs> how did they, how did NASA connect with the NFL? And they're like, please just like, can you get us like a cameo or something? <laughs> like what I want to do the PR agent. I want to know what the PR agent for what's his name? Dobbs. He's on the Cleveland Browns or whatever. I just want to know like how he pitched it to him. Be like, Hey, like I know you're in the middle of the NFL season and everything, but like, how would you love to ask NASA a question? Uh, they're going to be like fucking up this rock that's up in the sky that is like no issue to us at all. But we would love it if we could make it seem a little less nerdy, a little bit more relatable. If you could just say, hey, I'm a quarterback and I would love to know how you're going to hit this thing. I mean, they're going to do it the way we all do it. You just have a couple drinks and you let it rip. We don't have enough mass in that spacecraft. We have to really impact it hard, and that's why we're impacting it at four miles a second, which is outstanding. <laughs> which is amazing. And I mean, we're actually going to get to watch impact live take place. And so that gets me to my next question. We have Metal Money on Twitter who asks, what is the size of the blast on the asteroid? Kelly, could you explain a little bit about that? Well, and that's something that we're hoping to find out from this mission because, you know, there's there's physics but and uh, calculations, but actually when you're dealing with a real asteroid that we haven't seen close up before and what type of there's material aliens. might be on the this surface, is an alien uh, what the structure is, this is something that uh, the Lichia Cube, we hope to see as the Lichia Cube flies by to see what uh, that blast was, how large it was, which will help those who are doing the modeling of how effective he studied the, uh, rocket uh, science. Uh, so then he should know the answer. And in uh, changing this is the just orbit, an NFL and NASA in, cahoots. Like Lucas just talked about the uh, mass and the velocity, but then also maybe that blast mm -hmm. that is seen afterwards, the plume he of material. He earned his degree in aerospace that, uh, engineering. Then he GQ. definitely, so definitely does not have that question. That's my point. Into the work that he knows it. In NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office, Lucas. Yeah, I would start by saying that this is a very important test. You already cut the whole chick as an emotion. Kinetic impact is an effective technique to use in the case that there would be any yeah. potential okay. asteroid on road to, to Earth. So definitely, for me, that's the most important thing about mm -hmm. this test. But then on top of that, there's uh, finding the asteroids because yeah. you, you can't go out and mitigate a possible threat if you don't I'm even know need it's to there. And so NASA is very focused this. also um, on finding near-Earth asteroids with telescopes that survey the skies every night, looking for near-Earth asteroids, getting uh, orbits minutes, calculated, team. figuring out where they're going to be in the future to see if we even need something by DART, and then working to speed that up. NASA's working on a near-Earth object survey. <laughs> Did I get permission to stream after hours for my completely real girlfriend? And have a different nah. perspective complement the ground-based telescopes to accelerate things just so that we know is there Congrats a threat out there that we're the New York facing that we change, do not boss yet move. know about. Um, it's incredible just to yeah, know the work you, that is going already on? being done. It's TMI. good to know that we're building off of it, but Shout it's out, good man. to know we've already got some people watching this, guys. Yeah. Um, and so I have our next question from Alan Ooh, on Twitter. Alan. Who asks, how long does it take for pictures to reach Earth? Well, the uh, the light, the time it takes light and then a radio signal from the spacecraft uh, to come to Earth is 38 seconds. But then there's also the time needed to process the images. So a few more to seconds hide the on, aliens, on, on top Photoshop of that. them so out. So after a minute, but still, it's, uh, it's, it's not instantaneous because it's it's a ways out there. Well, that makes sense. I mean, but under a minute to get something back from space, I'd say we're doing pretty good right there. Mm -hmm. right. So Lucas Kelly, thank you so much for everything that y'all are doing to keep our planet safe. Thanks to her. And so it's important to note Dude, that tonight she's we're Hulk attempting angry. something that's never been done. And with that presents many challenges to overcome. Here's what makes DART a first of its kind mission. She is good at speaking though.
The DART mission is a very difficult mission because we are trying to do something that hasn't been done before. This is the first time we're going to an asteroid that is this small, this dark, and we're actually going to attempt an impact. The DART mission is really something that the whole world can get behind. Hell yeah. We're doing this mission to prove that we can deflect an asteroid if we find one that is on an impact course for Earth. Just we in case Bruce Willis isn't an available. Asteroid 163 meters wide, which is about the size of the Washington Monument, while flying at six kilometers per second, which is like going from New York to DC in about a minute. There is no chance that this asteroid could ever hit Earth. It's a very small asteroid. It's only about the size of a small football stadium. And it's almost uh, 7 it's million miles away from the size of a the small Earth. football That's, stadium. Uh, 28 times the distance between the Earth and the moon. There's kind of a limit on how much mass you can launch in space. You know, rockets are only so big. Uh, so our spacecraft is only the size of a golf cart. Draco is the a primary instrument on the DART spacecraft. It is the camera that is going to be imaging the Didymos system as we approach. When we first oh, see yeah. the asteroid through Draco, uh, it's just going to look like a pixel. There's a star tracker on board. That's what it looks like. That takes images of the stars and compares them to a known catalog to determine which way it's pointing in space. It poses the ah. biggest risk because very, very small errors in this measurement can spell the difference between success and failure. And those measurements are going to be fed into the SmartNav algorithm that's going to be making the autonomous course correction. Small body, uh, maneuvering, autonomous, real-time navigation. Course. There is a very yeah. small probability that we don't hit the asteroid. Even if we do everything right, um, our sensors work well, our spacecraft is doing well, we are looking, we're finding the asteroid, even then we might still miss. We're trying to teach a computer how to recognize an object we've never seen before. And the way it does that is by taking pictures of the asteroid and then interpreting where it is in space <laughs> and guiding nine. itself to it. The spacecraft is controlling itself. SmartNav is guiding the spacecraft. Controlling and itself? We have very limited ability to respond in that time. So it has you sent to a do it sentient refrigerator up into the sky to fight off an alien out. asteroid? We see this all Monday, man, and we coast. This Monday is wild. Until we hit a the sentient asteroid. refrigerator. It is going very, very fast towards the asteroid, traveling at six kilometers per second, two hundred times faster than a car on the freeway. So when we hit, all of that mass, all of that momentum, pushes the asteroid. Kilometer. Even giving it a small nudge will allow it to change its course. But if we did see an asteroid on track for Earth, this would be enough of a deflection. It's like a bittersweet moment. Yeah, all this hard work just got destroyed, but that was exactly why we put it all together. Mm. All the endeavors mm. that we do for space and in space, this is probably uh, one of the ones that uh, one day will be the most important thing that uh, we've ever done. In the future, I hope that DART can teach us what ways work and what ways don't work for planetary defense. Because it is humankind's uh, first demonstration that we have gained the knowledge Planetary and Defense Coordination to be able to Office. The Earth, uh, from, planetary uh, Defense impact. Coordinator? Dude, how do you get that title? Planetary Defense Space Coordinator. Space exploration is rooted in pushing past boundaries. Remember, tonight is a test and we hope to make impact. Now that you've learned of the challenges today's test, let's head back to mission operations. And there are no known asteroid threats to Earth. Progress. Samson, how are we looking? That's what they want us to say. Hey, we have 30 minutes to go until impact. As we heard earlier, so far so good. SmartNav is now targeting Dimorphos. Thrusters are firing, maneuvering the spacecraft. Yeah, they are. Draco, Darth's eye, playing paparazzi with Dimorphos. <laughs> providing SmartNav with about an image per second. And this is a good time to remind you that what we're seeing on the Draco feed is delayed by about 45 seconds Shut up. on account of signal delay and image processing. Uh, and coming up, we're about donations. to see the team conduct so nice. the final poll, one last scheduled confab to make sure that all systems are go. And as we head to that, I have someone with me who knows a thing or two about ensuring spacecraft readiness and integrity. Betsy Congdon, Dart's mechanical Betsy. systems. We all knew Betsy, she was coming thank on. Thank you so much for joining me. 
Thank you. A legend. See, led the team that literally put DART together. Is that right, Betsy? Yes. Yeah, so the, my job is to make sure the engineers and the technicians all physically put all these boxes that you've been hearing, bolts and all, all onto a spacecraft all together. I gotta ask. The crazy this, thing uh, is, mission is like, so ambitious. I'm how many hours, just so how many positive. Years, how many people? Her IQ any is probably oh, man. So, triple I mean, to double mine. DART has been mine. thought about for a long time, but really started in earnest about five years ago. Dude, we started building four, up the spacecraft. Four digit and, you know, IQ that for sure. Assembly that I was talking about about two, two and a half years ago. Um, and so it's been hundreds of hours, you know, to make something like this possible. People with all sorts of talents. You've seen a lot of them uh, today. That's incredible. And so we're heading up toward another SAS update, as I said earlier. And as we all know, Are we going to precision this lock? is a unique and challenging environment. When you're assembling DART, what were the key boxes you were checking off of that very long quality assurance list to get the spacecraft to where it is right now and hopefully till impact? So space is very hard. And so what we do is each individual component, Lisa was talking about this earlier, goes through its own individual testing. And then we put Hollywood the whole spacecraft space. together. And we will check out the electrical systems, making sure all the boxes are working and talking to each other. We put it into a vacuum chamber, make sure it's going to work in space, put it through all the different temperatures it's going to see, and then put it on a shaker table and actually uh, mimic launch. And so it actually goes through all of that as a full spacecraft as well as individual components. Unlike so a we baby, go through a lot you of testing, are supposed to shake a satellite. Uh, mission simulation. I suppose, or a rocket at least. That's incredible. I mean, I don't know if you different know, rules you for babies so versus space temperature projections in space is another key part. Yeah, so the um, we have chambers here at APL that are specially built to take these spacecraft, put them into the vacuum of space, and run them through the temperature spaces that we're going to actually see. It's incredible. How many times do you check? Is it like one test and we're done, or are you sometimes <laughs> testing and testing? Lots and lots of testing, and that's what makes it, you know, so perfect. We're seeing these great images coming in uh, because of all that testing and all that work. So, you know, you don't do anything once. You're doing it many times because once it's in space, there's not a lot of ways to fix it. Right. Well, do you ever, you know, think about that one panel, that one component that gave you a little bit of heartburn in the clean room, and you're <laughs> up at night thinking, I think that thing is going to hold true up until the end? Everything, <laughs> everything is looking really good, I will say. You know, we had a lot of new technologies, which are really exciting. The Rosa Solar Rays had never been integrated onto a spacecraft before. And so that was like a challenge, but one the team was up for, and now it's all ready and working perfectly. All these new technology demonstrations, I mean, it only adds to the complexity of this mission and to, you know, testing things, I wouldn't say even more so, but it's, it's just as critical. The new technology, everything has to be so to make sure it comes yeah, I mean, all of this new technology just requires extra testing, but that just gains confidence. You know, you're seeing the team working through that, working through all these mission sims. So um, that's really what makes it exciting. You don't want to just do the same thing over and over. This is what makes APL a special place. We build these special spacecraft that, you know, have never been done before. The last quick question for you. It's got to be a little bittersweet that a spacecraft you poured heart and Sol into is about to careen into an asteroid. How, how are you feeling about that? I'm feeling great about it. You know, it was designed to careen into the asteroid. It's, it's meeting its destiny. So it's really exciting to see, um, and I can't wait for impact. Well, it is serving a purpose. I guess that's why it's What if they did some surprises exactly, for us? So they put some, like, so. fireworks in there awesome. just to make it a little bit more well, colorful? I think we are about to get into that final poll in the mock um, very shortly. So we're going to mock what? hear that final 30... Let's go. Minute poll, and then we're going to hear from Lena Adams again, Dart's mission systems engineer, to give us that summary of what we just heard, how she's feeling, how they're feeling in there. Uh, very exciting stuff. This will be oh, the final poll of the evening. Let it rip. Let's do this thing. It's an alien pinata. Feels that way. Certainly feels that way. Let's get this rocking, man. I want to hear some conversation with with the aliens before we mess up their home. Like a standoff. Good old standoff. 30 minutes of the biggest live failure of NASA. I don't know. They seem pretty cocky about it. And I appreciate that. They're like, looking good. Small percentage chance we, we mess this up. That final poll. I feel like the guy... The main guy there, this right here. This is Dart MSC on DT Just like, Mock. He's like, oh shit, it the is camera's time on. for the last status poll. Yes. Here we go. We're about, what, 
7,000 miles from Demorphos at this point. Mm -hmm. So, yay. All right. Um, 7,000? Dude, we have some we distance doing? to cover. Still looking very good. Uh, Demorphos still tracking along that same brightness predict as Didymos. That's Didymos. Great. All right. Maneuver complete. <laughs> Yes, thank you. What do we complete? Right. Shit, he interrupted. Rude. <laughs> Rude. Uh, SmartNav. SmartNav is looking nominal. We are at under 30 meters of projected mist distance right yeah, now. Yeah, it's looking really good. Let's Look at do that. This. That's uh, that's looking fantastic. Very excited. Six kilometers right, per uh, second. GNC. That is cooking, man. GNC also looking good. We've, we've been very excited to do those burns, so we've been waiting <laughs> a long time. Oh, this is great. Autonomy? Autonomy is green. The heaters are cycling nominally, and we've had no new uh, fault rules firing. Okay, wonderful. DSN? DSN is green, and ESA is green. Got plenty of margin. Looks good. I right. like to think Ground that system. one of these scientists is like Ground the bad boy of the group. A few users manage clients, but he goes everything to is going fine there, and we are green. He wears leather jackets. Yes. He has Wonderful. tattoos. Thank you guys. Complete one of these the has to be the bad boy um, scientist, and I just want to know who that is. I also feel like half one, the words they've been saying, I don't one. know what right. they mean so at all. Didymus is looking like itself. We'll see what Didymus is looking like soon. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to transition to precision lock at 20 minutes. That's our next milestone. Let's do so this. So thanks all. Come on. Right, I'm just doing Adams. this for the small off chance the that, operations. like, the aliens defenses protects its home Hi, and our Hi, Lena, rocket just doesn't very work. Positive. How's it going in there? Oh, it's going great. It's going great. We've Holy locked crap. on uh, Demorphos. We're Why maneuvering towards so it. And, uh, yeah, everything Yo, is looking really good. We are, they rock. Um, we were at the time There's of the call within just a few flavors, minutes. There's multiple flavors, just so you know. you got to try all of them, Billy. Miss distance, which means we were hitting uh, towards the center. Strawberry, this normal, point, we're, Nutella. You know, coming back there about 30 meters off the center of the lit portion of Demorphos as of right now. We've executed two burns. Two and burns. Everything's looking on track. Same. Oh, that sounds wonderful, Lena. Thanks so much for that, and good luck on the final stretch. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Who is the bad boy scientist? All right, Betsy. We had that very positive poll. Lots of fantastics. Lots of clapping. We heard Lena in a very positive mood. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. It's amazing to oh, see like this the is actual dots on the way screen for than real me. coming down from the spacecraft. Very exciting. Any, just tell us any she's words a genius. I love 15? it. I mean, obviously, they're doing a great job. They've practiced a ton, and uh, we're ready. Go Dart. Go Dart. You've heard it all loud and clear. All right, Sahara. let's get it in all chat. Go Dart. We, we need more global like enthusiasm. Go Dart. Go Dart. Back Dart. You. That's all I want all to see right. in there. What an go Dart. Go update, Dart or Samson. nothing. The chat better be blown up with Go Dart. Team Earth. This is us versus them. This isn't a state thing. This isn't a country thing. This is Earth. Versus everyone the mark, else. The We're the top dogs. You gotta target. prove it. That's why John fake, Thompson's fake, fake APL go dart. engineer Michelle go dart. Chen Let's go dart. helped develop <laughs> new autonomous navigation technology Team dart. that will ensure a bullseye. Let's take a look. Never in my life would I have thought I would take a couple hundred million dollar spacecraft and crash it into an asteroid. <laughs> My name is Michelle Chen, and I lead the Another team one who's way smarter than me. I mean, yeah, the she's the John Hopkins APL. The DART spacecraft to hit an asteroid. The DART mission is the first planetary defense test mission. Our goal is to hit and impact an asteroid to understand why? and study the momentum transfer so that we could potentially later down the road, if we need to, deflect an asteroid on its way to Earth. I am the Smart Nav lead. SmartNav stands for Small Body Maneuvering Autonomous Real-Time Navigation. SmartNav, I always consider it sort of like the brain. Navigation. And so the, the camera, Draco, is thousands and thousands of lines of code that had to go into that are probably incredible. And hit the target in the field of view of the camera. We're flying at over six kilometers a second. It essentially occupies a pixel up until six kilometers a second. Prior to impact, and then that's where everything gets really exciting. And so you could just imagine if it was a human being joysticking this 
Because we don't know for sure what the asteroids look like, our simulation gives us the capability to use different asteroid shapes and asteroid objects to see that our smart nav algorithm performs against all these unknowns. We're super excited and nervous as well. I love pushing the boundaries and I love the application of math into Holy real world shit. problems. You know, and then seeing it actually It is moving at four hundred and ninety one Usain bolts. That's if you're just science. joining us, we're about 24 minutes away from DART's impact with 491. The spacecraft is flying at we'll 4 round miles it up. per second. 500 Usain Bolts? That's how system. fast this thing is cooking? I'm here now with Tom Statler, DART Wild. program scientist, and Wild. Don Graninger, DART impact modeler. Tom, Don, Dirt. thank you for being Tom here Don. with us tonight. Tom we Don. have some good news happening, but we did Potentially just hear about the, the same person that Dart is facing tonight. So, Don, could you tell us a little bit about what kind of is Bruce Willis leading this? Yeah, he was like just on this. screen. Yeah, sure. So, what's really interesting is that until just you know even a few minutes ago, I feel like we're just getting our first look. Is this one Tom or Don? And so we have absolutely Dr. no Don idea what we're going to be impacting. Dr. Don It could be covered in Dart rubble pile. It could be modeling a completely expert. different shape. We don't know until we really write up on that impact, and that's probably one. No stairs in space, no stairs in space, I mean, no but that's in what space. really makes tonight so exciting. And so, Tom, could you expand a little bit more on how we will use this information in the future if all goes successfully? Well, this test is It'll really start important to understand a galaxy how we war. might be able to deflect asteroids in the future. And when we, when we measure program the change in the binary NASA. period of dimorphos, and we will understand how the asteroid reacted to our kinetic impact. And then as we get deeper understanding into exactly what the geology was of that asteroid, that's the basic information that's going to help us refine our physics understanding of asteroids and our ability to compute and predict, like Don does, runs these fantastic codes and extend this knowledge to really have a, a, a good plan for how we might react if we ever do discover a dangerous asteroid that is different from Dimorphos. Well, a hey, I mean, dangerous asteroid. Sorry. So mm -hmm. it sounds like y'all's party is really just getting started after impact. So mm -hmm. congratulations on your success so far. It has been a pleasure. We're Thank on to so them. Much. Tom and Don didn't fool us. Now, any second, we should be learning if DART has a precision lock on its target Dimorphos. This is a key milestone critical to tonight. Yo, success. legit, Bruce Since Willis is going to be like with Optimus Prime and just fuck this asteroid How are things up. Going? Hey, Tahira, the energy is indeed electric and the team is hyper focused. <laughs> you could hear a pin drop right now as we're coming up on the critical 20 minute mark from impact and expecting to hear from the team that SmartNav is now precision locked onto Dimorphos, which means that SmartNav will be tracking only Dimorphos from here on out. Why? SmartNav has, Smart has full confidence that we are in fact tracking Dimorphos, and so we want to remove any confusion by continuing Short to track Short Asteroid. Are you guys long or because short on Asteroid right now? Is that its shape could be I have some zero DTE puts on this Asteroid. Which Draco imagery like multiple blobs, as the team Good likes point. to call them. No stars and in the we background. We don't want SmartNav to mistake any of those blobs this, this for is Dimorphos. Hollywood. So we're doing away with tracking Didymos all together. We are waiting for that announcement as of precision lock. Um, all right, we're about to hear from the <laughs> team. Actually, we have some time until we hear that. Not the best timing. No one wants dead airways. Keep it going. Keep the show alive. Tell us about how there's a lot of energy, even though you could also hear a pin drop. High energy, but really, really... Dude, no one wants dead airways. Keep it... Give the people what they want. Cut to an ad. And this stream is brought to you by Five Hour Energy. Have you ever now just sat, son of a bitch, he cuts it on me when I'm lock. doing an ad read for them? All right, we expect to be in precision lock. Just not soon. professional. Not professional. This stream is brought to you by Netflix. Make sure you catch the newest season of Space Force. Starring Steve Carell. They should have got a sponsor for this. Senator Dizzle. Shout out. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, Lord, she coming. Lord, Lord. <laughs> what is going on? Dead air. We're waiting for confirmation <laughs> of precision lock. All right, give us the precision. Come on, give us the PL. That's what us in the biz call it. 
we don't have the time to say precision lock because we're too busy doing nerdy shit. We just call it the PL. Like, did you get the PL? Yes, we got it. Go ahead, SM5. That's what we're waiting for. We are precision locked. And oh, still we're PL'd. Yes. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. Go dart. Go darts. PL. This is great. Um, this is Dart MSC on DT Mach. So this was our last milestone. At this point, we're going to be uh, working towards Demorphus. I expect we're going to do some burns. We're about 4,500 miles away. We're going to do more burns. From Go Dart. So Go Dart. Let's see. Oh, Lordy, Lord, she coming. What? What in tarnation? Ground stuff for one, uh, FC2. Right, joining me now to react to that bit of good news is Lindley Johnson, NASA's planetary defense officer. Lindley, you heard Lena, we are now precision locked. A lot of applause, things are looking good. The and planetary defense the coordinator. Truth. How are you holding up? Oh, I'm doing great. Uh, you know, the team's been doing great. I'm doing great. You know there, buddy. I was sitting there on the ranch looking up at the night sky and I thought to myself, well, dang nabbit, what if one of them alien rocks one comes down here in America and fuck with us? And I looked at my wife, my darling, a three plus decades and I thought, mm-mm, Darcy, no way am I gonna let one of them alien rocks mess with my homestead so i got on the horn i called up nasa i called up nasa real loud i said listen nasa there's a couple things that we need to get straight and we're gonna get it straight on this phone call right here you know and nasa's like what's up man well dang nabbit uh, i have an issue with these floating rocks in this space thing and i think we should uh Give him the old American welcome of the, you know, a little bit of a ha knuckle sandwich, if you will. If you catch my drift here, brother. And NASA was like, fuck, fuck yeah, sign us up. We even have a Hulk lady that will present the whole thing. I, I don't know nothing about no Hulk lady, but hell yeah. If it's going to make America a little bit safer, make the earth a little bit safer, protect my ranch, protect my doggo. Fucking sign me up. I am the planetary defense coordinator. America. America is good. Media using the hashtag planetary defender. Now telescopes from around the world planetary are observing defender. tonight's impact to ensure that how successful <laughs> my, my we are at changing the asteroid's orbit. They'll be measuring this success. <laughs> and you may be wondering, how does that happen? Let's go behind the scenes How with astronomer Nick Moskovitz at Lowell Observatory, home to the telescope that discovered Pluto, to see what's in store for DART. Didn't we cancel? Wasn't Pluto canceled? Like, wasn't Pluto the first victim this of cancel Lowell culture? Lowell is one of many observatories around the world that will be observing planetary the DART impact, NASA's first ever planetary defense test mission to see how much a spacecraft impact can deflect an asteroid in its orbit. So this is where Pluto was discovered. Isn't this something that like you can kind of know without knowing today. it? So let's go check it out. Pluto telescope. Pluto this got size shame. Pluto telescope, yeah. the telescope that was used to discover Pluto almost a hundred years ago. So here we are at the Clark And then we got rid of it. Percival Lowell's inside at, job. Observe Mars. Inside job got rid of Pluto. Discovery telescope about an hour south of Flagstaff, which is where we are going to be collecting data for the DART mission. And the reason we're all the way out here in the middle of this forest is that we have really dark skies here. <laughs> 50 minutes of the end of the world. Love you, Matt. <laughs> yeah, as the world's ending here, don't forget to like and subscribe. Catch you in the next one. <laughs> Oh, wait. <laughs> and this is the Lowell Discovery Telescope. This is what a 4.3 meter what? telescope looks like. Whoa. This is what we will be using to study Didymos and Dimorphos in the days Didymos, and weeks Dimorphos. after the DART impact. The DART spacecraft Dimorphos. will be an asteroid called Dimorphos. A special because Ooh, Didymos. it's a binary asteroid. Dimorphos did. a satellite around a larger asteroid called Didymos. And DART Didymos. will actually be hitting Dimorphos 
And what we will be measuring is how much DART changes the orbit of Dimorphos around Didymos. So this is an important test for planetary defense mitigation strategies. Planetary defense. Ever have to do what are we program. defending the against, team? One of many I'm on to them. The world, which will be used to study These Didymos science folks Dimorphos. think they know more really than us. Coordinated effort. And, and, and what they we're looking do. At here is but a large that's besides the point. Primary mirror that's in the middle of the telescope tube here. Up at the top is a secondary mirror. You can join the, the planetary defense there, team on NASA website. Oh, I'm signing allows us up. to take images with the camera that's located down at the bottom. Let's this do is this maybe thing. one of my favorite hidden rooms at the telescope. We're like standing inside the telescope. Underneath the telescope, 100 tons above your head. <laughs> Held up by this, which is cool. It's sort of, as you can see, the, the highest peak around They had to quickly clean up and hide all the aliens feet. before they filmed this. They're like, oh, get them back in the room. Sun right there. Get them back in there. It's perfect. For DART, we're going to be collecting images of the night sky. And typically, an observer would be here in front of one of these consoles controlling the instrument and taking images like these as they're coming in off the telescope. DART is really a sort of before and after experiment. We Do you think just to understand the our relationship the with ET fell south and, and like what this is just us now strong arming ET? We're like, we'll mess up your planet. Pass in front of Didymos and behind Didymos. What we will be doing with those images is measuring the brightness of Didymos and, those and looking at how that brightness changes. And those dips in brightness allow us to measure when. Uh, these eclipses happen and measure the orbit period of Dimorphos. And so you have essentially a fixed star field here. All the white dots are stars. They're firing the rockets in Hollywood Studios. Through this field of Didymos and Dimorphos, which again we can't distinguish them as discrete points of light, but we have that small we object that moving through the field of view. So after impact, we will then be able to go back and start observing intensely, looking for those mutual events, you know, those eclipse events of Dimorphos passing. I, I want to play some music, but I'm afraid I'm going to get each taken one of down. These frames, we're measuring the brightness to assess. Do you think I'll get taken down? Going one of these events where Dimorphos is passing in front of or behind. I want to set the mood to determine the orbit period of Dimorphos around Didymos. This is such a cool experiment. It's such a singular experiment using the ground based telescopes. Like Worth this it. One and others around the world Worth to, to watch it. The and see how it's affected by this impact event because that's really what's going to give us the answer to what did DART do at the time of impact. And that will be exciting to see how that evolves over the days and weeks following that impact. All right. After a 10 month 470 million mile journey, DART is just minutes away from making history. A truly global effort, this mission has brought together people from around the world, united under one goal, to find a way to protect humanity from a hazardous asteroid, if one were ever discovered. Now, usually NASA spacecraft are intended to operate for many years, or even decades, but not DART. DART was built to be We chained our hearts in vain We jumped, never asking why We kissed, I fell under your spell of love No one could deny Don't you ever say I just walked away I will always want you Ricked yes, up so hard. Now, we're ashes on the ground. Don't you ever <laughs> say I just walked away? I will always want you. Uh. I can never lie running for my life. I will always want you. I came in like a wrecking ball. I never hit so hard in love. All I want.
NASA. I don't know, guys. This isn't just me. So demonetized. <laughs> Say I just walked away. I will always want you. This is I came in like a wrecking ball. Oh, I did miss it's so gonna get fucked up. All I wanted was to break you up. All you ever did was break big big dark energy. <laughs> If you guys aren't getting jacked up, this is our first intergalactic fight. Like, come on. We need a little bit. We need some of that big dart energy. Asteroid is trending in the dark pools. These aliens don't know what's coming for them. They don't even recognize how many Kardashians we have. I could stay awake just to hear you breathe in. Watch you smile while you are oh, sleeping. Man. We're definitely going down. YouTube's not going to let this one coast. I could spend my life in this sweet surrender. Bruce Willis. Go dart. Hashtag go dart. Even better. Here we go. Here we go. This is the right one. This is what we need to bring it up. Whoever suggested this, you're a genius. Everyone get ready. Get it out. Get acquired. We're gonna fuck this guy up. Ben Affleck, Bruce Willis, Optimus Prime, Hulk. We got the whole team. We got it all ready.
let's go. Final calm opportunity. And then stop maneuvers and impact. That's where we're going, team. Fuck yeah. If this doesn't make you feel some sort of way, folks, I don't know what will. Hashtag go dark. This asteroid never knew what was hitting it. This one's for America, boys. All right, the asteroid. <laughs> Fuck it up! Destroy <laughs> lives matter. <laughs> Alright, we're on to stop maneuvers. Final step before impact. Is it glitching like a Snapchat puppet? Oh lordy. Oh lordy. Alright, 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 alright. We have a minute to go. Let's get tapped into the NASA studio ago, here. Five minutes ago, we couldn't even resolve this this object in space. All right, now, one are, minute. We're it, running at 493 on Usain and bolts. We're now dropping the clock, and we'll go by loss of signal to confirm impact. That's how fast right. we're moving right now. Yes, imagine we'll get that here loss we of go. signal, and then we'll here we hear go. Here we go, everyone, Lena buckle Adams up, again. buckaroo. Um, letting us know. I feel, like we'll know. I feel like that'll be a crystal clear. <laughs> Here we go. I think Target so. acquired. Let's do this thing. To see more, uh, Dude, more we're ramming this In thing. In fact, look at that. Didymos has even gone out of the view. This will forever now, be the day we declared war us. against the aliens. This is remarkable stuff. Oh. oh Here. My goodness, look at that. Looks like control system settling down. Angular rates look really good. Angular like rates. Investigation teams. Phenomenal. Angular rates. Best angular wow. rates in the game. Oh! No, no, come on, we can do better than that. <laughs> Starting to see those individual boulders there. Dude. Oh, are we hanging oh, right a little? Rocks. Are we it's hanging amazing. right a little? Bring it in. Bring it in. It's amazing, guys. Bring oh, it in. We're hanging right Look just a little. Unbelievable. Yeah. Dude. Dude. To me, like we're headed oh. straight oh, in. Oh, Lord. She coming. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Eight, yeah. Seven, oh, six, wow. five, four, three, <laughs> two, one. Oh, my gosh. <gasps> Dude. Oh, wow. Awaiting visual confirmation. That's it. It just. Oh, <laughs> how close are we going to oh, get? Right. We got it? 
It just cut there. It blew up before. Just, yeah, cut. <laughs> That's pretty sick. That's pretty cool. Dude, it would have been oh, something fantastic. if the last second ET comes out and oh. kickballs it into another oh. solar system. Wild, 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 wild. wild. This this is beautiful so cool. <laughs> well, 7.16 p.m. ET, September 26th. That's when we declared war on the aliens. Amazing. What, what does it look like now? I don't know. We what just blew up the camera. The camera that was on it. A few weeks ago, they had their last dress rehearsal. They were getting emotional at the dress rehearsal. It's just the ball. Like, this, this is crazy. We're getting emotional. This is not the real thing. I can only imagine what they are feeling <laughs> right now. Crazy. Yes. Well, you can Ran out of video memory. Screen, yeah, stream drop. <laughs> Probably internet wow. issues. <laughs> Hearing impact. The curtains close on Draco feed. That raw joy from the team, years of hard work and the weight of expectations I don't want to be like off their shoulders. telling NASA how to do their this job or anything. But why not send up two and like the ones lagging behind it so we can all watch it to see what happens? Like, who cares? Double the price. Money's fake really? anyway. They just this print it and give it to the NASA to the do mission. shit. Like, they should have sent up two, is my point. Boaz confirmed. Now, the hedgies you know, got him. I always say, it's one of my favorite missions. Now so is market when the pumping starts. in response. They're like, hell yeah, no now, more aliens. Uh, we just took out our impacted. first alien base. Now we're going to see for real how effective we were. We're going to train all of those ground based. Wild. telescopes um, on Impact. the Didymos Impact. dimorphous system and we're gonna make measurements that will help us uh, determine just measurement how, to what it's, send what it looks up like another now, one relative to what it give was us before. the information so, it's gonna be great very cool we're gonna live no one knows right, this is when science and we'll probably eventually and one day die a great purpose planetary I would assume one day very much we will and, die yes you know it makes a magical moment like this yeah really. Absolutely, and you can see so many people there that have stoked. made this happen. Rightfully so. Uh, the team of APL engineers um, that have really poured their souls into this mission. APL, John Hopkins Wait, showing up. to mark this historic moment? Oh, we're, we're embarking on a new call era options. of human Zero time. DTE um, call options. Which we potentially have the capability oh, to protect ourselves from something like a dangerous, hazardous really asteroid impact. Really getting into this protection, what an amazing defense thing. We've never had that stuff. capability before. Thank you so much. Kind of Those crazy. are poignant last words. Tahira, Astro history has been made. For revenge. Back to you. Back to you. We're going back to the Hulk wow, lady? Yep, there I she is, She-Hulk. What an exciting day for the Dude, Dirt fix team. The color. And in, in case She's you're keeping green, score, team. humanity won. NASA, don't do Asteroids her like this. Zero. Now, I'm here with Nancy Chabot, Dart Coordination Lead. Nancy, talk Nancy. about a moment to catch on camera. What is going through your head right now? I mean, I'm just thinking, wow, that was amazing, wasn't yeah. it? I mean, those images, you just got closer and closer, and sort of we've been planning for this moment. We've been talking about it for years at APL here. We've been working on this since 2015, and I knew... I've been we've been working on this? They've been fucking with the aliens since 2015? And Seven years? And then they exceeded my expectations. And just That's zooming in on? like that, and, uh, you know, it really is just such the team accomplishment, and to get to this moment over so many years... And I don't have to talk about it as coming anymore. It's happened now. We have done this. It's happened. Cool. It is just incredible that cool, as cool, humans, cool, like, cool, we cool, have cool, done cool, this. Cool, we did cool, this. Cool, 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 cool. And Nancy, do you have anything you'd like to t say to the team? Well, there you have it. Earth One. Asteroid Zero. It's the perfect way to end this particular stream. Peace out. Have a great evening.